lens number two. This is the one that's got the knurled front surface here on the focus scale ring. Hurry up camera, keep up. Disassembling this is very much the same process. So I'll quickly strip this down and mention what I need to mention as we go. So we've got four of these wedge shaped things that hold everything together. This one where the spring's on at the moment, we'll leave that well alone. because I can't be bothered going out and hunting for the special screwdriver in order to remove it if I wanted to. Just remove those three screws. Remove those wedges. That one just pushes back out of the way of course. Lift this up, it just comes apart very easily. And you can see there, there's a fair bit of grime here. There's a little bit of grit and dust. It certainly will benefit from a clean. So I'll just get that loose wedge out from under there so it's easier to clean. And start cleaning this stuff up. Again, I'll be using naphtha cigarette lighter fluid and a cotton bud and I just want to make sure I get all that dust and grit and old grease out of there. The gear set here. Now these two engage with each other so that they counter rotate. There's, even though they're just a, a fairly narrow piece of gear they've got an area where they just catch each other so they counter rotate and that's what's required in order to move our depth of field pointers in this sort of motion. So one of them is set lower than the other one and one is set higher so it clears the bottom one. Right so these parts need to be cleaned and this thing I think you can see there's a fair bit of dust and grit and rubbish in there that all needs to be cleaned all this outside surface, which you can't see because I have to refocus the camera. All this outside surface here looks a little bit tarnished. It's certainly dirty. That might just be grease and dirt. All of that rubbish needs to come off. And uh, we can start putting it back together. That's quite black as it comes off the end there, whether that's because it was a graphite impregnated grease or whether that's just from the aluminium, uh, it's a bit unclear. I'll clean all around the surface here. The discoloured aluminium here, is this camera going to focus? Not today. This discoloration here certainly looks like staining on the aluminium. It may have, uh, that's not uncommon, it, these are probably anodized and anodizing creates a hard layer of oxide basically on there. And that layer of oxide is uh, very hard but it's quite porous, it will, that's why anodized aluminium can be dyed different colours. The dye penetrates into that oxide layer, so it must be porous. Now I'll get all this filth off here and I want to get down into the that groove and you can see that there's stuff coming off there that could be dust and dirt that's packed in there it could be dried graphite grease but whatever it is it really needs to come out because there's bound to be 
dust and other rubbish that we don't want. And of course I need to clean this side as well. Most of that was just dust, it wasn't uh, stuck there particularly much and it, it's all gone now. So that piece is as clean as we need it to be. This piece here is the next one to deal with. So the front face, I'm just cleaning that first. Yeah, don't be surprised if you can't get it perfectly clean. Uh, the aluminium will absorb stains and stuff over time so it may well be that you don't get it back to be looking all clean and new and shiny but the main thing is to get any grit and dust and other rubbish out of there and old grease You can cut through an awful lot of these doing this job. That's all right. They come 200 in a packet, and they're cheap enough. They were better a few years ago when you could still get the ones with the plastic stems, but apparently baby seals got them stuck up their nose or something, so it's not considered ethical to have plastic stems on your cotton buds and you have to have these cardboard ones instead they've actually improved the quality of these quite a bit the cardboard stems used to really turn to custard but uh, these ones aren't too bad okay well that's looking pretty good the wedges the wedges need to be cleaned. As I mentioned earlier, that green stuff on there is some low friction material. I don't think it's Teflon, it probably predates Teflon. Uh, I don't know what it is. Okay, to the assembly. Well, as for lens number one, first of all we need to slide this wedge back in here under the rail because we won't be able to get it in there otherwise. Like that. When you're putting this back in place, you must have one of your where you focus scale is where the numbers are must line up here basically where the point is going to be otherwise you won't get this in place right so that went on without any hassles I'm just checking the feel of this feels okay right so we'll put a little bit of molybdenum paste on here And I'm putting it in that groove all the way around where those wedges will run. You could use graphite grease, molybdenum grease, probably any number of other substances. Right, now I've just dropped that wedge back out of there, so we to get that back in place.
and I happen to know that the here is where that pointer is so I need, need on the, I know I need to have that on the scale somewhere where I can see the numbers that's it so that's in place we've got this wedge in position so I'll put a wedge directly opposite that Do that down lightly and I'm trying to make sure that that wedge is square to this centerpiece that it's not cocked at an angle otherwise one of the edges will bite in and make that stiff that's that's moving very smoothly there it doesn't feel unduly loose so I'm going to tighten that screw up check again that feels good so this one the one that we've got floating around in here I'll put the screw in there I'll slacken it off slightly make sure I've got that wedge snug in against the, the center piece tighten it up and again I'm checking to make sure that things move smoothly there's no undue stiffness that feels good you need to be aware that if you have these pushed in too tight you if the lubrication is good enough you could still get a smooth movement but it'll be stiff and that's because you're basically compressing this piece as it passes the uh, wedges that would be undesirable You want this set so that there's no undue play in the mechanism. But yeah, I certainly feel that there's a look there, there's resistance there now. So I'm going to slacken that screw off, pull the centre part back towards the outside here, pushing the wedge back, and tighten that screw in and check. Okay, that's good everything there feels good it's not rattly there's there's no rattles in it but it's a smooth movement that's exactly what we're looking for now the end of the spring here i don't know if you can see that yeah it's got a bit of a a kink at the end that may or may not cause us some problems these springs are a bit fragile, they're fairly easily damaged. I don't think I'd be able to press that back into shape, we'll just try using it as it is. Right, so we can start putting the componentry back on here, and I just need to clean it as I go. So I'll do that off camera because otherwise this camera will do that, it'll darken things out so you can't see what I'm doing. Now, of course, you'll have all your pieces laid out neatly in a line so that you can take the first piece, the second piece, the third piece and so on. Unfortunately, mine doesn't look like that because I'm too messy. So I've got to pick these pieces up because I know which ones go where. And in case you've made the mistake of putting everything in one heap, this is the first pointer we put back in. It's got a tiny hook on the outside edge there that catches the spring. The other pointer doesn't have a hook on it. So that's how you can tell you've got the right one. So this I'll just clean quickly. This looks relatively clean as these things go. Uh, the ones that don't work well are ones where people have lubricated them to death. Right, so this one goes in here. 
you can see we've got two spots where the point is will be it's in this one closest to that point there and this one should just about drop in without any arguments and it does this passes down past this first gear at the top here and it has to connect with the one at the bottom let's get that thing seated why is this making a liar of me? It should just drop straight in. This is a bit tight. There's, uh, that's better. It's dropped in now. And this should be coupled with this lower of these two teeth gears here. It's, that's it. It's dropped into position. I'm not sure what the fight was all about. It's moving smoothly enough. Where's our spacer ring? Now here's the spacer ring. I'll just clean that. Now the spacer ring separates the two pointer rings and if you have a layer of grease on the top surface or the bottom surface of this it'll stick to the rings and that would mean that stuff doesn't move smoothly over each other. So I'm just running some molybdenum paste around the outside edge of that because that's where the spring's going to run. I don't want it on the top or bottom surfaces. Now this sits in here, there's a little notch in this which fits over that little point there. And this needs to hook up to our spring. like that. Now this spring's a little bit out of shape as I say so I twisted it over so that this is not being pulled hard into it and that should return easily to the rest position. That's moving nicely. The next piece Next, we want to put our little uh, cam in there that follows that track there. So I'll just clean this with a bit of naphtha. Now be very gentle with this cam. I mean, you've got three points on there. You've got the hole, the tube with the hole in it. You've got the thicker post which follows this track and you've got the thinner post which couples to the other depth of field pointer. Now if any of those are bent out of shape, if they're not all running in the same plane, this thing will not work smoothly. It'll tend to jam up. So don't abuse that, be gentle with it. Now I'm going to take some molybdenum paste and just give a little wipe to that curved track there. That's what that thing's going to run down. And then drop that in position like that. The second depth of field pointer has little slot in it that couples to that cam. I'm just giving this a quick wipe inside and out and there was some obvious dirt on this piece. So this drops in position. Now this first one is hard up against its stop at this end so we need this one to be hard up its stop at the other end.
to get the pin in on that little cam engaged in the hole here. Now this isn't hard up against its stop, so I need to move this around on that top gear another notch and have a quick look. That appears to be correct now. Making sure that that's all seated. So both of these pointers now hard up against their stops at each end. I think. Maybe I can get that another tooth. Let's try. Maybe I can get this over another tooth. Let's have a look. See if it'll go. Yes, it can. So I was fooling myself. I wasn't as hard up against the end there as I thought I was. Okay. So that piece is good. Now we have this piece. The pin on this couples with that little hole on the cam. The spring hooks over the same post that the other spring hooked over over there. And again, this needs to be clean and free from sticky grease and dirt. If I was to lubricate this with anything, um, I might be tempted to put a fine wipe of molybdenum paste around the inside where it revolves around the centre, but generally I've found it unnecessary. Or I might use dry graphite. Let's get that pin seated into that cam. That's that. That's sitting there. Rotate that spring. Hook it over the post. Okay, so that's that half of our lens body complete. We need to do, put this piece, clean these pieces up and put them together. And these pieces, of course. So, the same deal again. More naphtha, more cotton buds. When you're using these, be careful because they do catch on sharp metal edges and then they'll leave pieces of cotton behind and those pieces of cotton can jam things up. So when you've cleaned things down, inspect them closely and you may need to blow out any stray pieces of cotton that appear to be stuck there. Just cleaning all the surfaces of this brass ring up. That's their cam surface there that the pin from the rangefinder runs on. Just cleaning both all around the outside edge. These are often discoloured. Now that's just from people handling them. And the, their perspiration does that. You, you can see your fingerprints in it. It doesn't usually cause any problem unless it's quite serious and then you feel roughness on there. You might need to do something about it. This seems fine. Some molybdenum paste. I'll just run a little bit around the outside of that piece. Around the inside. That's where it runs in that channel in the back and some on the face where it's going to couple to our rangefinder pin. That's probably a bit excessive, but it'll, do, it'll be alright. Now I'm just see a thread of cotton there, I'll get rid of that. Just check that this moves freely in here. It's not binding, that the action is smooth. If it was rough it would mean that there was probably some lump or bump on the metalwork that needed to be dealt to. That appears to be fine. 
the retainers we've got three retainers these are uh, sometimes awkward to get your screws started If you're trying to demonstrate how easy it is, you can be sure it'll run badly. If you're telling people how hard it is, the stuff will just fall together and make a liar of you. That's just the nature of these devices. These are awkward for two reasons. The hole in the little plate is very close to the diameter of the screw so the screw doesn't easily just drop straight through it. And the hole, the threaded hole in the lens body isn't countersunken. The edge is not relieved so the screw doesn't just drop down into a pocket to make it easy to start the thread. It's quite flush on that surface, which makes it awkward to get the screw started sometimes. Right, so we've got that in there. Now I'm checking the movement, making sure it's smooth, that there's no undue noises from it. If all of these components are completely dry, particularly if they've got a little bit of dust in there, That'll act like a chattering. It makes a, an unpleasant noise as you're moving the focus. Okay, so I'll just clean up these two components and we can assemble this. Now that's got a bend in it. Let's flatten that out. If you've got a shim like this, you want it to, to sit flat naturally, otherwise it'll be applying some unwanted pressure somewhere in the system. I'm just getting this to sit flat. That's pretty good. And this piece, of course. which couples the mechanism in the lens body to the lens tube and the, and the camera. When your cotton buds come off like that you can tell that there was something in there which may have been grease, it may have been something else. Okay so I'm going to use my assembly screws again and these just act as a guide to hold that shim in place in particular while you're getting everything back together Okay, so I'll set this up so that my focus scale ring is round in that position with the fork opposite that screw hole. Here's the base plate that we're putting onto it. So I need to make sure that this is opposite that screw hole so that when it's flipped it's in the right orientation. A 
put this in position. There's a cutout in this plate. It hooks in there, it just stops either side of that plate. And that looks okay. Hang on, making mistakes. Shouldn't be talking so much. The shim goes on first. Now this is counterintuitive because you would think that the shim went on last. The shim goes on first, then this piece goes on. And that, there's a bit of bounce there because of that distortion of the shim. Hopefully that won't cause us any problem. And I'll lower this in place. Over those screws. Check that the focus fork drops into place with that brass thing. And then pull this little tab across because it's just caught under the edge. Okay, with that all moving nicely there, that's looking hopeful. I'm holding this together firmly with between finger and thumb. Well, I move that and I want to see my depth of field pointers come together evenly in the centre. And they do. Right, so I can get my screws into the back of the lens. I just ran out of card space before. In case you were wondering about the jump and continuity. Right, that's held together firmly. Now I can check this, make sure that my focus is smooth. No undue noises, no roughness. Make sure that the lever that moves the diaphragm blades is free and moves smoothly. And this one moves the depth of field pointers. And that moves smoothly. And they drop back to their rest position nicely. Right, that's all looking very good, so I can put the last two screws in position. Nip all four screws up. That's our lens body. All good and ready to go. So lens capsule next.